What's going on folks, Rick here, I'm back with another video. I'm here to do my one month review of the LG G7 ThinQ. Before we get into the review and my thoughts of this actual device and using it as my daily driver for the past month, let's get some specs out of the way. This phone is rocking a Snapdragon 845 processor and a Adreno 630 GPU, which is on par for flagship devices. The one area where I think this may fall behind a little bit, and I'll, I'll go through that in a full review, is the four gigabytes of RAM. At this point, most flagship devices have between six and eight, um, depending on the carrier. So I think um, LG is falling a little bit behind with just having four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, other than that, you have your um, fingerprint scanner on the bottom here. It's a um, standard issued fingerprint scanner, works fine. Uh, not a lot of false reads, and I like it. Uh, it's, it's a good fingerprint scanner. You have your laser autofocus and your flash. You have your dual camera setup, which one is a wide angle camera, and the other one is your standard camera, uh, I believe to be 16 megapixel. On the bottom here, you still have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a microphone, uh, USB type C, and your mono firing speaker. Now the one good thing about the LG G7, uh, they have a resonance chamber inside the actual device, which basically just means it's a hollowed out chamber that is able to amplify the volume of the speaker when you're leaning, uh, when you have it down on, on, a, on a flat surface, a hollow surface will make the sound just resonate even louder. To the right, you're gonna have your dedicated power button. So this is a change from uh, LG's uh, former devices where the fingerprint scanner would also double as a power button. I kinda like the fact that you do have your dedicated power button. Volume rockers up here on the left-hand side, as well as your dedicated uh, Google Assist button. I have yet to use this uh, button as of yet, but it's a lot better than having a Bixby button because most people wind up using Google anyway. Up top, you're gonna have a microphone and you have your SIM tray slash micro SD card tray. Okay, so now with any review, uh, let's get the bad out of the way and then we'll talk about the good of the device. So like I mentioned earlier, four gigabytes of RAM. Um, I didn't think that was gonna be an issue for me, but I did notice in certain aspects that I had a bit of stutter and a bit of lag. Now, um, stutter. So I don't think I could replicate it right now, but basically what would wind up happening, um, let's say I'll load my uh, dashboard right here for YouTube. So uh, there would be a button or something that you would click in the side ba based on any internet page or internet browser that you're trying to click on. And for the life of me, I'll click it four, five, six, seven times and it just would not do the function that it was supposed to, was supposed to do. Whether it's next page or uh, clicking on a video or things of that nature. So I did notice that uh, a bit of freezing from time to time. It wasn't uh, prevalent where it just annoyed me to the point that I couldn't use the phone, but it was there in certain aspects. I'm gonna credit that to the four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it does well to you know, manage you know, the apps and things of that nature, but every now and then you'll hear, I'm sorry, every now and then you'll have a hiccup and uh, that's one of the instances where you would have that hiccup where you're constantly pressing to go to that tab and just nothing happens. Again, in regards to the RAM, I do have a couple of forced closes. Um, again, nothing to write home to mom about in regards to um, RAM management and the device always closing apps. I do have quite a few internet pages up. I have right now about 20 internet pages up right now. Uh, and you know, no forced closes as of now. So I do have quite a few pages up, but uh, every now and then apps will crash and a couple of force closes and Just to be able to compete with other flagship devices They really should have given this device six gigabytes of RAM 
to stick to the four gigabytes of RAM. I don't think there's any flagships out in 2018 that's still using four gigabytes of RAM, uh, unless it's a budget flagship type of device. And even some of the budget flagship devices are rocking eight gigabytes like OnePlus. So for them to stick with four gigabytes of RAM, I just think that that's really, that's really like something that should have been on last year's model. Um, and I don't think um, four gigabytes of RAM is just gonna cut it for 2018. So now let's discuss, discuss, discuss one thing, which is the infamous notch over here. I'm not sure if you can see it because my background is black. So let's just Google something. All right. All right. So we're Googling something with a white background, some air conditioners right here that I was looking at. So anyway, uh, the notch over here, it really does not bother me that much. A lot of people complain about it. Uh, they find it to be an issue. It's unsightly. Uh, after using it for a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, I just did not really notice it as much and it wasn't a major issue for me. If it is, you're able to disable the notch with a, uh, a black strip over here in the settings section. Uh, you could disable the notch, but uh, again, to talk about some of the uh, drawbacks from the LG G7 um, is that this is an LCD display, and I'm not sure if my camera will pick it up, but right now, the blacks are just not as black compared to, you know, the the settings of the, the top of the device where the camera is and everything of that sort, that you'll notice that the black is fainter on the screen than it is on the actual hardware up top. Uh, so you'll actually notice a bit of contrast between the two. It's really not that big of a deal for me, but it is noticeable. So anyone thinking of purchasing this, um, that could be something that might bother someone that's a bit anal. Next thing, uh, even though um, LG is is kind of like promoting their residence chamber and the uh, volume levels on this bottom firing mono uh, speaker, it is very loud. It's 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 a loud speaker. Uh, when you do play it, uh, place it on a flat device, it is it does get louder. Uh, it does have that oomph to it. You feel it vibrate. It's almost like when you're in one of those cars that has a subwoofer in your trunk and someone's playing something really loud, you feel that vibration. It's something similar to that. But it's still not stereo speakers. And you do notice it when you put it head to head with, with a device like Samsung that is rocking stereo speakers now. Uh, the Samsung device is a bit louder. Uh, and you have that one speaker at least firing in your face. So that does help you with uh, audio and things of that nature. Okay, so now that we got the bad out of the way, let's talk about the good. So now this device retails for about $750, okay? I think LG would have had a home run if they would have retailed it at about $650, the same price that they retailed the LG G6. Uh, they could undercut their competitors and a lot of people could look past things like the four gigabytes of RAM and the mono speaker on the bottom. So now I was able to pick this device up new uh, through one of those sites like Swappa or eBay, something like that. I was able to pick this up for about $500. So now this device at a $500 price point is an amazing device. This device is so good at a $500 price point that I actually returned my OnePlus 6. Now, I may get a lot of flack in the comment section below in regards to returning the OnePlus 6 for the LG G6, but for me, and my personal preference, I just found it to be better. I'm not a fan of stock Android, and OnePlus 6 was more of a stock Android type of feel. Uh, it does have more RAM, um, but again, I just was not a fan of stock Android. It felt like stock Android. I like skin versions of Android such as Samsung and LG. So I decided to go with the LG G6 at a little bit cheaper price point, less RAM. Uh, I do, I do like the fact that they both have the dual camera setup, but 
I like the wide angle camera setup on the LG G6. And then the bottom firing mono speaker on the uh, OnePlus 6 was really weak and this one is really loud. So for my personal preference, I rather have that usability of the skinned Android, the, the wide angle camera and the louder speaker. For me, it was like no competition, so I decided to return to OnePlus 6 uh, for the LG G7. Again, just to show you guys a little bit, here's a cup that I'm drinking from. So let's try to load up the camera real quick. All right. Okay, this is in selfie mode, so let's take this off selfie. Okay, so you're gonna see the differences right here, okay? So right now, right now this is the regular setup for the camera. Okay, let's take a picture. Now we're gonna go in the same exact spot for the wide angle. Now, that's a major difference. Without actually having to move or go to a different direction or a pull back, for me, the functionality of the wide angle camera is you know that much better than like you know double zoom or whatever the case may be and you know just looking at even the wide angle shot let's go to the picture this is the regular shot oh this is me and my wife okay so let's go to this picture just looking at contrast you know there's not a lot of static there's not a lot of noise there it's a very good camera and um i'm i'm happy with the camera quality of the pictures so far Call quality of this device as well has been uh, very well. I haven't had any issues with uh, drop calls or any any things of that nature. Everything sounds clean and crisp. Um, again, no issues with call qualities, uh, making calls and receiving calls. I did notice uh, something. You know, maybe it's just different phones and different manufacturers. I did notice that I was having service in areas at my work that I typically don't have service with my uh, Samsung devices. Uh, I don't know why, maybe they use different bands or different types of antennas, but I was getting service in the basement level of my job where my Samsung was just, just no service whatsoever. So I was still able to make calls um, in the basement. So that was a pleasant surprise. Then also let's discuss the uh, the phone's capability uh, and the brightness capability to go up to uh, I believe 1,000 nits and they have this boosted mode and again the camera can't really do justice to it but in uh, bright sunlight situations you could go to 100% and then click on that boosted button and the brightness levels are just amazing you have no problem seeing things from outdoor. Bluetooth capability as well. I uh, didn't have any issues with Bluetooth dropping. Uh, GPS worked fine. I took this on a couple of road trips upstate. Uh, I had no issues with the uh, GPS dropping. I did have some issues with the LG G6 in regards to GPS, but in regards to the G7, nothing whatsoever. So mild gaming. Uh, internet browsing has not seemed to be an issue for me. I did take this out of state a couple of times. I took this device to Florida. I took this to upstate New York where service was spotty at best and it did fairly well um, as well as can be expected. So overall, just to wrap up this video, uh, this is my one month in on the LG G7. Um, and I really like this phone. I'm gonna actually use this phone as my backup phone. Being that I was able to get it at such a cheap price point, uh, I am looking to uh, pick up the Note 9 when it uh, drops. I know they're unveiling it on the 9th. And I'll be using this as my daily driver until the actual, um, release of the Note 9. I've actually decided to sell my Samsung S9 Plus because I'm making room for the um, Note 9. But overall, at the price point I got it, which was $500, I picked it up off a of Swappa, um, you know, for 500 bucks, new, in the box, uh, T-Mobile branded, because I am a T-Mobile user. I don't have a problem with having a T-Mobile branded device. The bloatware was really minimal. 
And to be honest with you, this is a great all-around device. Um, me, I'm using it as a, as a backup phone, but to be honest with you, as a daily driver, if this is your phone, you're gonna have no issues with this device other than the few small issues that I mentioned earlier. So guys, that was my video. Uh, do I give this device a thumbs up? I, I do. Um, the only thing that I could really mention other than what I mentioned earlier was design-wise, I just wasn't really impressed with the design. It just seemed just like your run-of-the-mill Android device like any other company is releasing nowadays. So they could have did something a little bit more in regards to design. But really, other than that, it's a very good device. Um, if you like Samsung devices, I don't think you'll have any problem going over to the LG G7. Uh, similar um, software, you know, a lot of options, a lot of features. Uh, it's a feature-rich phone, and basically, you know, it's a, a good all-around phone. So, all right, guys, that was my video. If you have any questions, any comments, leave it in the comments section below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.